The following is a conversation. It has the features of any conversation, such as imperfectly expressed thoughts, ill-considered opinions, and the notions of several sleep-deprived brains. Try not to get your stethoscope in a twist about it. Y'all get uh, caught up in the Kate Middleton mystery? I thought there was cancer. Going on. I know, I know. I was yeah. worried that it was going to be something like that. Yeah. I wasn't sure until somebody said something about Kate Middleton, oh and then I Googled Kate Middleton, and I was like, so Kate Middleton cute. has cancer. Oh. I, it was the mystery before the cancer that everybody was really caught, in, caught oh, yeah, up in. Yeah, that I didn't hear. Because <laughs> it was like, it was like <laughs> oh, uh, you know, what's happened to her? She hasn't been seen in weeks, and then she releases this photograph that's clearly doctored and all this kind of oh. stuff, and so people were making up like... Yo, this, I was just like, shut up, people. Yeah. Let this poor let this poor royal woman have her <laughs> this poor royal have her woman. privacy for God's sake. My God. Yeah. I mean that's really tough. Isn't the point of the royals is to be like very public to the people though? I guess I so. Don't know. I guess so, but also like there I mean, there are I feel like there are some things that I don't know if off limits is the right word. Yeah, what about HIPAA? But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they have HIPAA in the yeah. UK. It's a, is that a solely like US thing? I don't know. I mean, they've got to have some version. They've got to have HIPAA. something. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Bippa? Oh, hip hop. <laughs> hip hop. Hip hop. Sorry. Uh, anyway, yeah. No, I just felt like people were being super weird about it. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard. You know, I, I kind of don't watch the news. So. It's hard for me. The only news. Do you not watch the news for a particular reason? Yes. Well, two reasons. One of one. One of them is that I'm like just busy and yeah, I'd yeah. rather be spending my time doing other things. Yeah. And the other thing is that I find that the news is generally so negative. Yeah. That it and I as we are about to find out, I am extremely high on the anxiety like mm. scale. Um, and so it just like causes me unnecessary anxiety. I feel like the really important things I'm going to find out not through the news. I've definitely decreased my consumption of news. I mean, I'm a, I'm a bit of a news junkie, mm. but I have also, you know, like I check in on the news every morning and every night. What do you use? Google News and New York Times. Mm, okay. Mm. Um, so I definitely check in in the morning and night, but also like... I've become a quick, quick skimmer. I don't listen to the news on the way home anymore, for instance, because mm -hmm. I would like to not want to drive myself into a tree. I'm not going to lie. I didn't That's even rational. know that you could listen to the news on the way home. On the radio. <laughs> the hell? <laughs> That's, that it's used to be the only the way to listen to the news. <laughs> God damn, I'm old. But invariably, when I turn it on, they're talking about <clears throat> a certain... A certain orange person that I mm. that yeah. I don't want to hear about anymore. In which we will begin here. There have been a again. lot of Wonka movies, so it's like <laughs> <laughs> yes. Curse it's you, overdone. Willy Wonka! Curse you. <laughs> the meandering in the margins of medicine. It's the Short Coat Podcast. Weird news, fresh views, helpful clues, and interviews by students for students. Subscribe to our weekly show at theshortcode.com. Welcome back to the Shortcode Podcast. This is a show that gives you an inside look at medical school from the students drinking from that fire hose. It's a production of the University of Iowa Carver College of Medicine. I'm Dave Etler. With me today in the SCP studio, uh, we've got MD, PhD student Jacqueline Nielsen. Hello. Uh, M3, M2. Hend Al-Kalani is here. Hi. Uh, and M1 Fallon Jung Hi. is joining us this week. Uh, before we start today, I want to remind you listeners, you short coats out there in listener land, that we are here to answer your questions about medicine, med school, and you know, take suggestions about things to talk about. Go to theshortcoat.com slash tell us to send something to us and free yourselves from bullshit that I come up with to talk about <laughs> on this show by making the show your show. I lost control of our uh, phone number that we've had. What? What do you mean you lost control? Of I don't it? know. Like Where I called, I, 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 I logged into it the other day on Google Voice. Yeah. Logged into it the other day. I noticed that it said uh, something like, uh, get a number. And I was like, what do you mean? I already have a number. And so I called our number and some woman picked up. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what the hell? That's oh what you said God. to her? 
No. I was like, sorry, I must have the wrong number. And then I called it again a little while later. And that same woman picked up and she's like, hello. And she sounded very annoyed. Um, I wonder if she's been getting calls for a while. <laughs> From neurotic med students. I yeah. I, I just like to leave a message. It turns out that if you don't if you don't make calls or texts from your Google voice number for 90 days, they may reassign oh. or they may you they may like yeah, they may give away your number. That's, That's really crazy. interesting. So send your voice message to the email. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm I'm, I'm working on a new phone number on an officially sanctioned. The reason we had that number is because back when the show started you know, in 2010, there was no option for me to get a official number. So I had to do Google voice and I don't know how it lasted that long, to be honest, I, with the idea that it could be just given away after 90 days of, of non-use. I don't know how it lasted. That long, Maybe that's like a new thing. That it could be. Think, yeah. It could be. But I was very, I was like, oh, sad. No more three, four, seven short CT. It's going to have to be some. Some other. Can we get three, five, seven? CT. I I there, don't know. There must be like a shortage of phone numbers. I feel like you really have like your finger on the pulse. Like, you know. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe this is uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the phone number apocalypse. Exactly. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Guys, high anxiety level. I know. I know. <laughs> we can't speak of apocalypse. <laughs> anyway, the shortcode.com slash tell us. That's where we'll that's where for now from now on we'll have the way for you to get in touch with us. It'll be right there. No matter what happens, if it changes, that's where it'll be. Shortcut.com slash tell us. Please send something. That would be lovely. Let me know that you're out there listening. Yeah. I love to give advice. Yeah. If you want advice. Yeah, that's the whole that's the whole thing that we like to do. Um picking a medical specialty. Big decision. Uh several a couple of you are probably not quite there yet. Uh Hind, are you uh are you all right there? Yeah, are we supposed to hear things through our headphones? Yes. I am not hearing a thing through my headphones. Uh, look for everything to there, be... There is an oh, unplugged there plug down there. There you go. I must have kicked it out or somebody kicked it out. I was just like anxiously sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> All high on the anxiety. Oh, I can hear you guys. Look at you. <laughs> Lift up your microphone oh a bit. Oh, God, that's funny. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh not, not, <laughs> not that way. Too much. <laughs> this is me like... Every day in clinic. <laughs> Just being awkward. Okay. Picking a medical specialty. Big decision. You weigh your, your intellectual needs. Uh, things like, you know, the kinds of patients that you want to work with. The kind of environment you want. Your level of ambition. Lifestyle consideration. Lots more. Including your perception of your own personality. And the kinds of personalities that you want to work with. And... And uh, the kind of assumptions that you might make about the personalities of different kinds of specialists. Um, do you, I mean, do you have any in your head? Do you have any ideas about the specialties that uh, do you have any ideas about specialties and personality? Um. Yeah. Before we started this uh, this trip, like this what morning. our stereotypes are. Yeah, yeah, what? Yeah, exactly. Mm. Like I feel like surgeons, for instance, are easily stereotyped for some reason. Yeah, like kind of being a hard ass. Hard, yeah, they're you know demanding, uh, grumpy. Mm. Yeah. Um, a little full of themselves, maybe. Maybe. Sorry, that was that was a blast but, on surgeons. That was my bad. I mean, also they, they, these are stereotypes. They may or may not be true. I've met plenty of surgeons who are not that That's way. That's true. You're right. Um, but I wanted to talk about the stereotypes specifically. So, I think the reason I was excited about this topic was like, you know, ideally you'd have a wide range of personalities in each specialty. Like, sure. ideally you wouldn't have everyone with the same personality in the same specialty because like your patients have different personalities and if you're in a specialty where the patients are awake like <laughs> like they're gonna have different personalities so <laughs> so you uh, yeah so you um, good point so mm. ideally they can interact with providers who they can identify with or get along with um i feel like your microphone is still not aimed at your face lift up the black thing oh yeah it's definitely sideways Yes, oh, there you. we go. Thank oh, you. That sounds better. Here we oh, go. really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Test me. There you go. Anyway, keep going. Yeah. So, I mean, that was really it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've all taken the Myers-Briggs test? Yes. Do you remember what your result was? I can never remember what it is either, but I have a feeling it was like ENFJ or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Like, empathetic n- neurotic I don't know, what is it mm. <sighs> anyway point is um fun fact myers-briggs was created by a mother and daughter team in the 20th century oh, girl bosses uh, girl bosses. <laughs> when psychiatry was in its infancy um the mother briggs none of these n- neither of these women were involved in medicine or psychiatry or anything like that um, the mother was interested in personality traits as a way to figure out the best ways to raise children. And the daughter was interested in aligning workers with the right jobs for them, which mm-hmm. has kind of played out over the years in how the Myers-Briggs seems to be used. Often it's, you know, it's very popular in, in like, uh, work, uh, employment settings. It's very mm-hmm. popular in the military. Um, oh, is it really in high school? In high school. In high school, very popular in high school. Yeah. <laughs> well, they try to figure out like what, I don't know, careers to slot you into or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it, I read this article, though, about the Big Five personality test and specialty selection from med school insiders, which claims that the Myers-Briggs test and most personality tests have no scientific evidence backing them up. Um, in fact, educational testing services, which you might know as the folks who've given us the SAT, uh, mm-hmm. wanted to use it in conjunction with the SAT in the 50s and 60s. Hmm. Um, you know, to do, you know, to find out what people were likely to enjoy doing or want to do. Um, and it literally couldn't find a way to validate the test. They couldn't figure out whether the test actually measured the categories it claimed to measure. So mm. they decided not, not to use it. Mm. But this particular article mm. that I, that we read claimed that the big five test does have evidence for its validity. I don't know how to interpret that. Yeah. I don't that, know what the evidence was. That evidence, um, but anyway, I asked you to take the test anyway um, over at uh, their website, um, thebigfive.com, I believe it is. I should have written that down. I'll put the link. I'll put some links in the show notes. You can you can check it out. Um, to, you know, sort of use it to determine your ideal medical specialty. Um, I'm going to share my results first. I am highly agreeable. Highly conscientious, highly open to experience, and highly neurotic, which uh, is defined as ha- having lots of negative feelings, <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, which is true, um, and low extroversion, which I think some people might be surprised at, given my public persona, <laughs> but I definitely would rather lie on the couch and surf the internet then go to a party for instance Mm -hmm. um so that tracks anybody else want to share their yeah their results yeah i just need to pull it up yeah yeah yeah, all right i've got mine up so i'll start low neuroticism Uh uh-huh so you have you have few negative feelings i'm always sad but i'm not like nervous about things if that makes sense okay all right keep going sorry it's but but I'm cheerful too. I'm so it's always, like you get both. I'm always sad. You get both. You get both. <laughs> um, neutral extroversion uh-huh. and then high open to experience, experience, agreeableness and conscientiousness. Okay. Okay. And there's lots of sub, uh, yeah, subcategories within each of these categories yeah. that I found interesting to explore. Anybody else want to share their results? I'm still bringing it up i'm sorry go ahead yeah. Phil. i'll um so it's out of a score of 120 it looks like i got 60 on neuroticism so half um 100 on extroversion yeah mm-hmm. 101 to openness to experience yeah. 97 to agree agreeableness and 86 to conscientiousness okay so Medium to low neuroticism and highly extroverted, open to experience, agreeable and conscientious. Yeah, but like a little less conscientious than the other three, which I think definitely tracks. <laughs> <laughs> For example, when you said that you sent us an article, I did not see. You, OK, you but us. what did you do instead of looking at that article? Well, I didn't even know it was there, but I, uh, <laughs> I, I took the test. OK. Yeah. But you also studied. So, you know, the conscientious. Oh. 
No, maybe. I, I might have also watched Basketball or one of the five Jason, five Jason Bourne movies. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I've been doing a lot of things this week. <laughs> nice. Living life to the fullest. Yeah. <laughs> um, I got a 52 on neuroticism, so I guess mid. Um, a 99 for extroversion. A 74 to openness. I think that should be lower. I'm, I am a rigid girly. <laughs> I am uh, um, 112 for agreeableness and then 118 for con- conscient. Yes. Cons- conscientiousness. Yes. Um, all right. Well, I, I made a uh, custom AI to uh, put those results into. Basically, I had you just copy and paste your results into the or I copied, I took your results and pasted them into the, to the um, AI to sort of figure out what specialties would be good for us. And I feel like they're all going to be very similar <laughs> because I think that despite the differences, we're probably all of a type. What do you think? Can we talk about what we think we want to go into, like regardless of what the yeah, thing yeah. is first? Yeah. If you think you know. What do you want to go into? I think like primary care, like something that. primary care field, okay. so like maybe family med okay. or like family med OB, something like that. I like it. Last we spoke, you were into psych hind, weren't you? Ah, uh, I loved my psych rotation yeah. so much. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'm going to do it though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Things have changed. I think you have to be very, very tough for that. Um, I'm thinking. You're off- tough. Oh, you're tough. Plus minus. I'm thinking ophthalmology. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I really like the eyes. They're just cool. Oh, that's right. You were also talking about ophthalmology. Yes. Maybe even more than. Okay. That's I think okay. I might have had the wrong person. Psych is a close second. Okay. Um, I'm thinking something in internal med. Probably I'm leaning towards oncology, but you know, it's it's not a hard cutoff. Okay. I could definitely see you being a great oncologist. Thank you. Yeah. Internal med is where the smart people go. You're going to do great. <laughs> Thank you. MD, PhD student. Uh, so well, it's funny. definitely definitely a uh, uh, an intellectual, I guess I you could say. It's funny you say that because the top the number two specialty I might excel in is research and non-clinical role. So wow. okay. looks like I'm on the right path. You're yeah. on the right path. <laughs> um, I got. Um, psychiatry. I also got research. I got psychiatry too. I also got psychiatry. Yeah, Dave. If you were, what would, what specialty would you go into? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I can tell you what the AI said: family medicine, geriatrics, some sort of research or academic medicine, um, and psychiatry. Um, mm. I think probably. Um, I don't. I you know, like I, I'm trying to ignore my intellectual capacities because I don't know that I have the intellectual capacity to like, um, learn the kinds of things that you guys have to learn. Not intellectual capacity, but but you know, what I'm trying to say like I yeah. I don't know that I have the the ability to take in information and store it in the way that doctors do. And you're just hmm. not like interested in it yeah. either. Like I, you got to be interested in it. I mean, like, I'm interested in passing for sure. Yeah. Um, but I would say pro- I I think geriatrics and palliative care would be great mm. for me, despite the fact that, for instance, palliative might make me cry a lot. You would be a great palliative care doctor. I could see that for sure. Yeah. And geriatrics, I think, is way more valuable than people like lay people give it credit for. I think most people, most lay people, don't really know what geriatrics is or even that it exists. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I kind of I kind of dig that. Um, people as they get older are no longer the same as they were in terms of their the medical issues that they experience and the kinds of th- things that they need medically. Mm-hmm. And why not have that be, why not go to a specialist uh, once you get to a certain point? That seems v- so reasonable to me and a way to really make uh, a big difference in the world um, with your specialty. Um, cause I think a lot of older people are underserved sometimes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Despite yeah. being, you know, often wealthy and you know, like wealthier than young people and, you know, medicine is great for the wealthy in this country, but 
Anyway. And like some of the geriatric care is not necessarily like prescribing you medicines, but mm-hmm. making sure that like you're safe at home and you have people that take care of you and that yeah. like if you need accommodations for mobility and stuff that that's taken care of for you. So. Sometimes it's about unprescribing medications. Yeah, exactly. um, I, I've, I've heard uh, we had a, an episode years ago um, with a geriatrician. And one of the things that, in fact, this happened to, maybe I'm approaching the point where I think geriatrics is like seventies plus. I don't, yeah, I don't think you're there. I yet. don't think I'm there yet, but I did my, my, uh, my um, family doctor, uh, couple of weeks ago said maybe you don't need that blood pressure medication because your blood pressure looks great yay that's awesome and uh yeah turns out she she's still in agreement with that after me measure so you know you you a lot i think a lot of people as they get older they accumulate medications and they're never like reevaluated. and that would be interesting oh, to me yeah. to sort of look at that and be like okay which one of these don't you actually need yeah mm. Um, because they cause a lot of problems. If, yeah, you know. absolutely. Balancing like quality of life yes. with quantity too. Right, yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah, okay, we- so geriatrics, palliative for me. Cool. Woo. You know, also I'm going to stage a slight intervention here. I always feel like always on the show, Dave, you're always like, oh, like I wouldn't be able to handle this or like I'm not as smart as you guys. And I've been hearing that for years and I think that is not true. This needs to change. Yeah. <laughs> you do say it a lot. You do say it a lot. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm I'm a little insecure about my my uh my brains, to be honest with you. What was your self consciousness score? <laughs> oh, uh that was Let's quanti- probably super quantitate high. this. Yeah, see, you yeah. made another joke. I what? Self consciousness, seventeen out of eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Well, <laughs> I, mean, I was, I just, I think you'd be a great doctor. Thank you. I Thank could, you. I could also see you being like an adolescent med doctor. Oh, okay. As goofy mm. as that sounds. No, no, I, um, I could, I could see that a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. End of intervention. Intervention <laughs> concluded. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a f***ing genius. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, you broke day. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I. I mean, I, just to keep keep it about me for for a minute or two more. I think this came from my experience in college, um, where I just wasn't very good at it. I didn't understand um, a lot of things that I understand now. Mm. I think, and so you know, I just didn't do all that great. Yeah. Or, or consistently so, anyway. Um, and I believe, I may cut some of this out, but I believe that um, I never really figured out how to, the right way to learn things. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, I didn't even know that there were other ways to learn things other than like reading and highlighting and, <laughs> and like, I don't, you know, like there, there's a lot more to it. Yeah. than that and i think you guys figure that out in med school if not earlier or we're just really good at reading and highlighting yeah. things yeah. yeah what did you major in out of curiosity in college? psychology oh wow what was the only thing that would let me graduate in four years after i got to <laughs> around I'm trying to figure out like what i wanted to do so <sighs> is it was that something that you were like truly interested in or was it like really just uh, like i was that? interested in communications yeah um i could see that so I kind of wanted to do what I'm doing right now, so I finally found it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, who, who, where were we? Okay, yeah, we were going over um, what you wanted to, what you want, what you're thinking of being. Yes. Is that where we were? Yes, well, but you went last. I did go last. Okay, good. Thank God. <laughs> and, then, and then we went over your specialty that the AI that the yeah. AI thought you'd yeah. be good at. Um, I would not be good. I would not. I might enjoy less surgery, emergency medicine, very technical specialties like radiology, anesthesiology, things like that. Hmm. Um, and that totally tracks. Although I do like to put, I do like buttons and lights and switches and things. So I think maybe radiology might be great. <laughs> you know, it'd be fun to opt to. But I don't know that you actually use those things. I don't know that as a radiologist, you're actually taking x-rays. No, I think those are the techs. You yeah. just, I think you just look at the pictures. I think I should be a tech more than I should be a physician. Yeah. I think I would enjoy that a lot more. Radiology was very, it was like my first rotation and it was very like, 
it was very much anatomy based like if you mm. if you like learning about the human body and like pathologies radiology is like chef's kiss for you okay. if you but like you never act on like you identify the problem but there's no treatment involved it's like there's the problem right now let's move on to the next patient. Unless you're something you know? like an interventional radiologist. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that, a very different. That like, whole yeah. field, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but just the general, like, look at at CTs and be like, oh, there's the problem, which, are, like, they are so smart for being able to do that. Like, I was very impressed. Um, but then you just move on to the next patient. Okay. So, yeah. That's really interesting. I wonder, like, for me, that would be, that would just make me crazy. You know, like yeah. the like seeing what it is, but then not having any control over what people do to fix it. You yeah. know? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I got off the two weeks and then I was like, I haven't thought about a medication in two weeks. <laughs> like like this nice. is weird. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> anyway. It's very patient. like puzzle oriented. Like if you love puzzles, pathology, radiology, even like emergency med, I feel like those are all great specialties for just like solving a problem yeah. without problem solving if that makes sense yeah short term like putting together solving. the pieces but yeah. like n- but but not yeah figuring <laughs> out the problem <laughs> without doing the solution yeah, yeah. which is yeah right <laughs> figuring out how to so put the, so the, together but not really but not actually so like it. if you're like if, if you're a, a pathologist it's the equivalent of saying like hey there are some puzzle pieces they go together yeah yeah and then like i don't know like the surgeon would be like okay now i'm going to put these together yeah. right? yes <laughs> yes yes which or is like, important it's yes. important to do somebody's that. got to yes. put the puzzle pieces together yeah or like knowing how to do a rubik's cube but not actually doing it yes <laughs> yeah just turn those things yeah <laughs> just turn them <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh yeah that it's really interesting that you describe like pathology slash radiology as a puzzle because when i think of like internal med that's what i think of as a puzzle uh, internal medicine yeah. here's like yeah. all the things that you need to do to put together the diagnosis and then like here are all the treatment options and here's how they fit perfectly into like this person's life and like that like puzzle is like the first thing that comes to my mind for like internal med so i think that it's interesting mm-hmm. that like i don't know i guess we see puzzles differently yeah what did you get for your AI thing. Um, so I got psychiatry first, then peds, then emergency med, then family med. Um, and emergency medicine. You know, how do you feel about that one? I because that's very different from the others. So I think actually, like going along with what Hin said, I think that you have to be an exceptionally strong person to do psych um like outpatient psych is one thing but like inpatient psych is really quite another and i thought that i wanted to do that for a little while but after like you thought inpatient psych particularly or just psych psych? in general um and then after doing like some uh like my ece in it last semester i was like the early "Hmm." clinical experiences that you guys do yeah yes um i was I don't know. I just like it really made me very like sad. And there are so many things about psych right now. that's just it's so underfunded. And there are so many people in the psych ward that like aren't there for psych reasons. They're there for like housing reasons. Oh, yeah, like. yeah. And that is extremely tough for me. Um, Peds, I think that I'd really enjoy. Um, I love kids. I just would also love to be able to like deal with adults too. And like, I don't, because kids are not just little adults. Um, I, I don't want to limit my scope of practice where if I ever did or like needed to work on an adult, I wouldn't know how to appropriately. Okay. Um, emergency med, I think could be really cool honestly the only thing about it is i want to have my own family and like i don't want and i heard that emergency med is like not that bad like as far as family things but um i don't know i just like so it's a lifestyle issue that you'd be concerned with i think so i like i think i actually could really enjoy emergency med like i sort of like that like 
Okay. I work very well under pressure. Oh, okay. Like, in fact, I work poorly under not pressure. What do we mean by pressure? Because I, th- I also work well under pressure in the sense that I, like, if a deadline is approaching, mm-hmm. I'll work really hard to, to meet that deadline. Whereas if it's not yet approaching, I'll probably let whatever let I have to do, like, <laughs> expand until it fills the time I have available, you know, classic thing. But under if i'm under pressure in the sense that you know something needs to happen right now and you make a decision right now about you know say somebody who's having a problem yeah i might panic <laughs> i yeah i <laughs> may just, not be a good trait for an emergency medicine physician. i usually when bad things happen i become extremely calm okay and i don't know why that is but like i think it's honestly because like my whole life i have always like catastrophized slash like expected the worst so that when bad things happened i would like be prepared which like i understand is like Uh a totally kind of like effed way to think but no i get um, it i get it and i think that it's like i don't know like when when weird bad things happen i'm just like if they if they don't like personally affect me sure um but also the time thing yes i do work much better under time constraints mm-hmm. and family med is something that i think i'd like to go into okay lots of variety what did it say that you shouldn't go into radiology i agree pathology i agree <laughs> anesthesiology i agree optho i agree okay no eye spoons for me Mm-mm. <laughs> no. ice spoons? Yeah. what is an eye spoon <laughs> <laughs> so my stepdad just recently had a detached retina oh, and okay. they had to go like look at the back of his eye <laughs> Oh no! And so they literally took a big ass spoon and just like <laughs> stuck really? it in there. And that's what he said. <laughs> and he, he was telling me the story, and he was like, "Yeah, they took this big spoon and stuck it in my eye, and I kept on telling him I can feel that." <laughs> oh. Anyway, but he's okay now. Okay, the, his good. eye looks a little funny, but did, he's, did he? He's, <laughs> it's, it's like it's all, not in. Oh, that's no, all. Like, it's all smushy. Yeah. It's like small. His it's more his eyelids. Oh, okay. I was gonna, actually, it's small. Yeah, I was gonna say what happened. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I got my eyes reduced. <laughs> Eye reduction surgery. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's funny. Oh man. Yeah, but he said that he can see light now. So like that okay. was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. How long does oh. it do, does? I don't know anything about auto for someone who's interested <laughs> to go into it. Is, 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 you haven't had that rotation. So yet. I'm not. Is it, <laughs> Is it gonna recover? Oh, as far as I'm concerned, yes. Um, he doesn't like seem all that like stressed about it. Basically, what happens is they like go in and they do something surgically. I don't know what it is, but then they stick like this gas bubble in your eye. Yeah, and then for ten days you have to sit with your head down like this. Okay, oh, for like ten this. days. Yeah. <laughs> and, um. Anyway, and he had to get like one of those like silly ass like back and neck massage chairs. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? So like he could just like look down without like messing up his neck, basically. And he had to lay on his stomach for like ten days, and it's so that the gas bubble stays like in the back, pressed of your on eye. the back of your eye. Yeah. yeah. You. I mean, like I think you can put your head up for like ten minutes or something. Wow. Like you know. At, every so often but that's it i'm just imagining that the first up uh uh, uh 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 what's the word i'm looking for op the op the ophthalmologist Whew, oh. boy i had a little problem there <laughs> just imagining the first ophthalmologist is like how are we gonna do this <laughs> how are we gonna keep pressure on the back i mean like if it was an if it was an external thing i just put a pressure pack on Got or something like that <laughs> but wait a minute let's i know let's put a big bubble of air in there <laughs> that'll do it and then make him lie down for yeah. 10 days <laughs> he also can't lift his head for 10 days but that, well, that's fine for, for 10 seconds or for sorry for 10 minutes like periodically was okay they said but like no more than 10 minutes and then like back down to the special chair like that's wow. that's the best we've got so far yeah yeah, but he was so hard. excited actually about it at first. He was like, think about how productive I'm going to be at work. Because <laughs> <laughs> he just looks down on his computer. <laughs> so, yeah. Think about the oh, books my. he read. No, Michael does not read. <laughs> so, none. None books. None books. None books. Oh, interesting. Yeah. He does love Netflix shows, though. 
There you go. Oh, good old Michael. That's kind of sad. Okay, no ice spoons. Yeah, he's good though. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Hand? I got um they recommended family med first. Mm-hmm. I think with the extra version, I think that kind of drove all of these. Um, family med, peds, psych, internal medicine, and occupational medicine. Interesting. Um, I don't know what occupational medicine is. Is that like a PMNR type situation? It says, this field requires collaboration with businesses and employees to promote health and safety oh. in the workplace. Yeah, so you might be employed in a factory. You might be employed by factories. You might be employed in the military, I think, is big on occupational medicine. Okay, you can work for OSHA. Um, yeah. Things like that. So health and safety in the workplace, basically, I think, uh-huh. is occupational yeah. medicine. We actually had a lecture on that recently in mass. Well, it's weird that you're saying occupational medicine because I got occupational health and oh. it, these seem to be two different things. <laughs> what does <laughs> yours say? <laughs> um, mine says it involves preventative medicine. It is a branch of preventative medicine. Yeah. Wait. Well, no, I guess that makes that's. I mean, occupational wait. medicine as a branch is yeah. a part of preventive medicine because you're preventing things from happening. Right. right? right yeah. In the Wellness in the workplace, cooperation, empathy. Hmm. Is this is different from what you said? Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. What what uh, yeah, what should you over. not go into, Hind? I should not go into surgery, apparently. Um, EM, RADS, PATH, anesthesia. So same, uh, similar to the rest yeah. of us. Yeah. I agree with the... Look, I loved EM. Like, yeah. we, we get two weeks in core year. I'm excited for you guys to have it. Like, it's fun. It's very fun. Mm-hmm. I would not do it. <laughs> 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 as, a, as a career. It's just very much like... I think what frustrated me is that it's kind of like you're playing Tetris and you're solving problems, but new ones keep coming. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. kind of just like, like it never ends. So I think it's more of like a mindset perspective of being like, I am making progress by, um, by helping the patients on this list, but you have to be okay with the fact that the list will never get to zero and it will always, 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 always be full. Mm. No matter how much you work. And that was like, I could tell like, you know, I was only there for two weeks and like by the end I was like, I can't do this. Like That's I, not for me. I, I, can't, I can't do the never ending list and not see progress being made with the patient that I'm working with. So fair enough do you think that you're one of those people that's able to like turn off when you leave the hospital or do you still like think about and like ruminate about your patients i always ruminate yeah (laughs) Yeah. about anything uh so that is yeah i think with em you have to be able to it gives you the like once your shift is over your shift is over and you can like vibe but like you have to also be able to have the skill of turning your mind off and not think about your patients yeah Anyway, random tangent. So, no. yes, I agree with that. I also don't think I would go into, like, I don't know. I might have the personality for family med and I am and stuff like that and peds, but I don't think I'll be going in the primary care direction. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Um, I got pretty similar ones, especially to Dave. Like, our specialties we shouldn't do were exactly the same. Okay. But I got psychiatry, research occupational health and general practice um but what i think is really funny is it says i shouldn't do surgery because i have low anxiety and low anger <laughs> hmm. Hmm. well low anxiety i understand wait but you shouldn't have, do surgery yeah it says maybe um, my ai sucks it says the because i feel like if you would if you had low anxiety you'd be perfect for surgery here's what it says it says surgeons often face acute stressors that require immediate decisive action which might not align with your calmer demeanor oh Hmm. so that's interesting okay okay so so you can't make decisions when you're calm (laughs) i would think i can only make decisions when i'm calm oh i don't know but yeah, interesting. Okay. Maybe we need to tweak the AI I a think I, Well, that's definitely possible. It's knowledge base consists of two articles. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine also said, it said, don't go into surgery because you have low neuroticism. Hmm. Hmm. Don't, I, mine says, don't go into surgery because I have low extroversion and low assertiveness. 
the, assert- which, the assertiveness makes sense. Which makes sense. Um, because, you ha- yeah, I mean, if you're if an assertive person can make quick decisions and and, uh, you know, be, you know, exhibit leadership. And and uh, I, I also in, I also don't have a high level of physical activity, which, you know. I f- the surgery is a bit arguous sometimes, right? Oh, the standing. It depends yeah, on which yeah. kind. Yeah. I also feel like the AI is missing that I shouldn't go into surgery because I'm clumsy. And I'll probably just like, no, yeah, the oddly, table's that over. W- yeah. <laughs> 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 like, I, I would be like a bull in a china shop. Oh, God. You still have to go through the rotation. I, I know it's... It's they make you stand tough. in the back. They do. That's yeah, for the I, best. I, I, I don't think we're going to be doing any like triple A's or, <laughs> or anything. It'll be fine. <sighs> so you just stand in the back the whole time? Is that well, really you know. Yeah, yeah, but with your hands up so you don't break sterile field. Seriously? Yeah, just in case. like In case they need you to be hands on. What if you have to pee? Yeah, that's what I'm worried about too. I think you could. Well, okay, I haven't done surgery, but I think you can leave as long as you're not like walking out every 15 minutes and like disrupting <gasps> people mm. and like bringing pathogens into the room. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, guess that's I fair. think you can leave. I don't know. I thought you were about to say, like, I think they can catheterize. <laughs> <laughs> they will, you will not have a catheter in the, on your surgery rotation. Surgical nurse is like, use the bucket in the corner. <laughs> yeah, too many pathogens. <laughs> but also, I think, like, if you are interested in surgery and you enjoy it, like, they do give you opportunities to be more hands on. Mm-hmm. I just don't think that's going to be me. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And for the best. Like, I don't think, don't think it's the best place for me. That's fair. Are you interested at, in all, uh, at all in doing like minor procedures? So like, I don't know, like baby biopsies or like if somebody came in with like a laceration. Like, sorry, not but biopsies babe. on babies. Like, <laughs> small. It's like, wait. It's like, wait. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I don't like touching people. Oh, it just like, and this has been hard, you know, being in medicine because you don't have to touch people a lot. Yeah. I want you to just do like, that a little bit. It feels like an invasion of space, so I always just feel uncomfortable with it. Are you? Do you like hugs? Uh, like not my favorite thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> How did you do with the the H E N T exam where yeah. you had to stick your hand in people's mouth? I was like, good thing I'm not a dentist. Like that was a good career move. <laughs> yes. That's, that's I could exactly. not be sticking my hands in people's mouth all the time. It just feels so invasive. I don't like it. Oh, yeah. But I, I do really like like managing problems, and I like acute situations where like. Things need to be figured out really quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't want to like have to touch people all the time, you know? That's fair. Mm. So you like you make the decisions, you tell other people what to do, and then they do. Yeah, like I get my information from like the scans and the labs and rather than like versus like emergency medicine where you're really palpating people and stuff like that. Like I'm okay with touching people. I just don't want that to be like the main thing. <laughs> in my clinical practice. <laughs> yeah, they have scribes to like take notes and things like that. Maybe they need touchers. <laughs> touchers. <Yeah. laughs> like you're my toucher today. <laughs> Touch that patient. <laughs> but that, would, that could get into some funny monkey business. Yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, it would just be awkward telling them what to do. Yeah. 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 Palpate that. How does that feel? <laughs> yeah. yeah like. Is, isn't that what the medical students are for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. what it, could you do like a laparoscopic surgery hmm. yeah like or like i can so i'm i was like you know i'm, I'm a lab girly mstp and i'm really good at like micro dissections this is sort of like how i've excelled um so i can really do like very fine s- small me- like manipulations and surgeries but even then like that's just like I don't know. That's not exciting for me, you know. Okay. What is a micro dissection? Um, dissection on a baby. You <laughs> no, that's a baby dissection. Uh, or so, like an undergrad, I uh, we had a Drosophila model, uh-huh. and so like you my much more micro than that. Yeah, yeah. Really my role was like dissecting the eye tissue from the Drosophila. Good that's Lord. so Damn. cool. You, you, you can only do that? it with a microscope. With microscopic tools. You, like very fine forceps, yeah. That's crazy. Were they in like the anesthesia? Well, like they did, were. Were they? You do the thing where you shake them. And- 
Um, huh? Well, these were these were larvae. <laughs> these were larvae, and oh. they. I don't even know if we anis. I don't even know if we killed them. We just sort of went right into it because it's Aww. like bug <laughs> larvae, you know, like. That's fair, yeah. And, like, a lot of them were dead anyway because, like, we were expressing cancer in their eyes and then, like, oh that would God. just take up their whole eyes and then their, their brain, so they would just die. Mm, that's but, um I mean, okay. I mean, it's... I would well, rather you're the one who's that. like, do you anesthetize them by shaking them? <laughs> no, that's like, I, would, I would rather do that on a bunch of flies than, like... On mice. Mice, yeah, you know? Mice, yeah, so, agree. yeah. In that way, it's yeah. ethical. I got no problem. I, I swear I'm ethical. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we used like this weird, like, we didn't shake them. We used like a wand that was dipped in something that smelled like fish. Mm, and then we just delicious. stuck it in their thing. And then they got all sleepy. We had, well, for, and the these fish were, juice. with the like adult flies, there was like a pad that like um, pumped carbon dioxide yeah. up. Oh. And so that would anesthetize them. Okay. Yeah, oh, kind of interesting. What? I don't know how we got to this topic. Uh, Micro dissection. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, that's funny. How, so you must be okay with procedures then, or like interested in procedures in some way, shape, or form? I'm very. I I would. I am very excited about the fine motor skill procedures. Yeah. Like like in opto, like under you, like you are using a microscope too, or like a the magnifier yeah, oh, yeah. Huh. i'd be kick-ass i think i'd be kick-ass at laparoscopic surgery we they they had a da vinci machine in the in the lob in murph uh, wow. atrium one day That's really cute. okay and um yeah the the, the trainer I, I guess it was a trainer and you know so they had these little like silicone uh doodads that you could like manipulate mm-hmm. i was like pretty good at it you know wow. do you play a lot of video games no huh i don't but I think I'd be, I, you know, I'd also be good at reading ultrasounds because I feel like I know what's in there. Mm-hmm. I feel like I know what I'm looking at. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I know what I'm have you at. have you done the like? You should do one of the ultrasounds like workshops oh, with us. We have one on Monday. Do you have an ultrasound workshop on Monday? I pocus. That's what it's I called. Pocus. Yep. Point of care. Those were so confusing. Ultrasound. I had no idea what was going on in any of those. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not world's <laughs> best ultrasounder. I. Just, I should say that I've only seen ultrasounds of like. Babies? Yeah, like pregnant women's, well, my wife's <laughs> yeah. <one> pregnant woman. <laughs> belly when she's pregnant. I'm like, oh yeah, that's a baby. I can totally see that baby. <laughs> so maybe, I don't know, like if, if, if I'm looking at like another part of the anatomy. It's maybe, very confusing. Maybe it would be very it really confusing. Is. Have you ever seen a guinea pig get an ultrasound? <laughs> Oddly no. Have you? <laughs> yeah. Do they you like, have They a like lay pig? the guinea pig back and then they'll, she, she, like I saw this video of like, this guinea pig who's pregnant. She's getting an ultrasound. Oh. It's so cute. Can I bring my cat? Yeah, I wonder if they, I bet they do. Pandora to Monday. Mm. Is I, she pregnant? No. Oh, <laughs> oh, you mean to do a regular, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the day that we have an SP where they're like, all right, like, look for the bladder. And then all of a sudden it's like, I think there's something in there. Did you know you were pregnant? SPs tend to skew older, though, so that might be a very I big surprise. <laughs> that would be a huge surprise. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, gosh so they're doing one on monday yeah and it's just like an intro to ultrasound no we actually already have had one it they're pretty long yeah. they're like two hours yeah like we're we like break it down by system so we've already done like the abdomen yeah so i guess no more right. uteruses for me yeah i don't know what the next one's oh, yeah. gonna what's be what's the next one um, I think it's heart. the second one that's is what heart, i was probably. feeling but i haven't prepared yet so i haven't prepared yet either i don't know what it is we, we've done the aorta yeah. they're fun they are fun they're just and confusing. like when you somehow get lucky and just happen to put your ultrasound on the right spot and you can see everything right away like nothing feels better than that <laughs> i think the reason i feel like i would be good at it is because I, I do have a pretty good sense of spatial Mm-hmm. Uh, I do have a pretty good spatial awareness, spatial understanding. That's a good skill. Um, that is yeah, a great I, skill. I do I not don't have, have it. That. No. Mm-hmm. And like, I think that's why laparoscopic like surgeries would be hard for me too. Cause I just like have a, such a hard time of figuring out how those work. Like where you are at in terms of anatomy, how you like miss things, yeah. how you can pull like organs and stuff out of like really small little holes. Like it just, <laughs> it's not making sense. It just doesn't make sense to me. I agree. I like, I very much focus on like 
how things feel to me and like that kind of thing. And mm-hmm. so which if, would be hard with laparoscopic well, surgery. Right. You yeah. Really like get if, that direct feedback. If I don't know how hard I'm squeezing. Right. Like something bad could happen. So, yeah, I don't know. I I get that like laparoscopic surgeries usually have much better outcomes and that kind of thing. But it seems almost like, like these days it's it. like the preferred way to do a lot yeah. of stuff. Yeah. You do have to have like a real 3D mind though. Yeah. And I just, yeah. I don't have a 3D mind. Yes. And also everyone's anatomy is different. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like it would be so easy to just like get lost in there. Like your little scope. You're like, where are we? You know, <laughs> <laughs> what's going is on? Is this the abdomen? <laughs> We're doing MSK neuro and vascular oh, tomorrow. Oh. Interesting. Looking for some DVTs. A- yes very good um that's the first thing that we're looking at dvts um and then soft tissue stuff dvts dive Deep. wait dip, uh, <laughs> di- oh, i don't know what the, oh something thrombosis yeah mm-hmm. deep vein deep yes. vein thrombosis yeah um Ew, knee effusion. That's mm, so gross. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> cellulitis. That's another thing that I would be horrific at is ortho. Mm. Ortho. Yeah. I would rather not be a doctor than be an orthopedic surgeon. Mm. That's what I like. Ophthalmology is hard for me too because just like seeing the eye look all gross and having eyes to like. T- I feel like a lot of so people would have problems it. with eyes. Yeah. Mm. There's um. And the the most grossed out I ever felt was watching a surgery about a facelift. Mm. Um, so that's another area where I'd be like, a really? Little, any, anyway, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. you. No, there's like, I'm my ECE this semester is in radiation oncology, and there's this um, radon method for like eye melanomas where you sew like a little cap that's radioactive onto the back of the eye for a couple of days. Oh, like a seed. To, yeah. yeah. And to kill the melanoma? To like apply that radiation to that really small area. And then you, you know, you just, you don't rip it back off, but like you sort of rip it back off. Um, And just seeing like the pictures of it, I'm like, oh, absolutely not. That's it's really, it really grosses me out. Probably makes you blind. It, I'm going to guess it makes you blind like two years later because you're like, your eye retinal cells just divide so slowly that and radiation is just targeting like cell proliferation. Right, right, right. So mm. for like the first two years, you're fine. But then once those cells eventually do have to divide, that's when the blindness occurs. Oh, is so that, it's very strange. Uh, better yeah. than having eye cancer. But yeah, like you're probably going to go blind anyway. So yeah, I mean, I guess it's better than a nucleation. Yeah. Yeah. Is that sure? Like, is it like a, do you know anything about like the percent of people that will, develop? is it like a 100% thing? I have I have no idea. You mean a hundred percent go blind? Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea. I just know that like that's the major risk, but it's not right away. It's really delayed. Whoa. It's very So you go slowly blind, I think. Yeah. And I'm I, I would imagine like obviously like chemotherapy would be like the first step mm-hmm. because maybe that would be more protective. Yeah. You probably wouldn't go blind from chemotherapy or else a lot of people would be blind. Um, maybe immunotherapy yeah, too. The radiation, wow. the radiation is just really interesting. Hmm. Maybe radiology is good for you. Maybe Jacqueline. Radi- no, <laughs> <laughs> that is decided. I I like to talk to people. I like to see patients. Like that's why I'm in medicine and not just in, like. We've got research. colleagues to talk to in, in, in some of these <laughs> things. Colleagues, you know, the person at the cafeteria. You know. <laughs> You know, your mom, your mom, <laughs> <laughs> your family at home, your mom. <laughs> oh gosh. I have a, one last, I don't know what time it is, but I do have one. It question. is 1255. Okay. Yeah. One last question. So a lot of people, like some people are like freaky about the eyes. Some people are freaky about the mouth. Some people are freaky about feet. Some people are freaky about like orifices, like, you know, the anuses and vaginas. I yes. love those. What? Okay, okay dude <laughs> <laughs> what's the thing that you're like freakiest about like i can deal with all the other things i don't love them but i can deal with them what's the thing that's sort of like wow i really just would really not like to do this this is like this is my thing i think like the vaginal exams the pap smears are really hard for me because like I know how uncomfortable those are. Mm. And so like a lot of 
like my uncomfortableness with touching people just like I don't want other people to feel discomfort either and so like that one just feels really invasive I'm not necessarily like super grossed out it just like I don't want to cause this patient this this discomfort it's definitely fair mm. I don't know I don't know if I have one I know I'm not a big OB guy fan I just don't like a lot of like tissue <laughs> Huh? <laughs> like very <laughs> high tissue volume situations like deliveries or like no. uh, like that kind messy. of stuff yeah it's like yeah. messy and like uh, probably a bad thing to say as like a birth doctor is, but. birth is beautiful <laughs> it's so beautiful it's the giving of life yeah uh yeah i hope you didn't use that voice at your your own children i did i was like look at that life you've given christine <laughs> <laughs> what about you Ellen? uh it's mouths for me 100 mm. percent mouths yeah i've already said mine which is you know the facelift thing i can't mm. yeah oh, what yeah. about that was yeah. like no. i don't know it's the face man it's the whole face well, you don't mind like, have you oh. seen a facelift so like on the, youtube or whatever go like look it up skin coming off that you don't <laughs> yeah yeah okay okay that's fair because it's like you, you're fine with faces like the way they are oh yeah like i love, love me a good face but okay. <laughs> <laughs> i'm also like a pretty squeamish about the idea of degloving the hand. Oof. Yeah, that's tough. That that's not a thing that I. Want. But then, you know, those are like emergent emergent situations. Usually, I don't know that. You know, routinely there's a specialty routinely where you're degloving hands. You know, mm. ortho. <laughs> no, probably not degloving. Yeah. No. Ugh. I don't know. Ortho. Maybe like plastics. Yuck. Maybe infection. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah maybe. Care. Maybe. Yeah, Ugh. that takes guts. Like burns. <laughs> burns yeah. wound care. Oh, yeah. Burn. That, would hard. That, that would be hard. That would be very hero. hard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, burns would be hero. awful. On that wonderful topic. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's a good place for us to end this. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's our show. Fallon, Jacqueline, Hinn, thanks for being a part of it. Thanks for having thanks us. Thanks for having us, Steve. And what kind of gross thing would I be if I didn't thank you, Shortcoats, for making us part of your week? If you're new and you like what you heard today, follow the show wherever fine podcasts are available, like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. Shows made possible by a generous donation by Carver College Medicine Student Government and ongoing support from the Writing and Humanities Program. Our music by Dr. Vo- Our music is by Dr. Vox and Catmosphere. I'm Dave Etler saying don't let the bastards get you down. Talk to you in one week. Hi, Shortcoats. Look, life in medical education, life in America, life in the world is often difficult. And I often wish I could help. All I have is this podcast, but in my wildest dreams, you have the support you need to lead a life of your choosing. You deserve to be happy, healthy, and successful in whatever ways you define those words. So if you need support because you've experienced racism, discrimination, harassment, mental health crises, I want you to be able to get the help that you need. And so I'm going to put some links in the show notes to some resources that you can use. But the bottom line is that for what it's worth, I see you. I know you're out there. I wish I could do more. Maybe I can in ways that I don't understand yet or know about. But I see you and I'm glad you're here and other people are too. This short code podcast is a proud member of the MedEd Media Network. Inspiration, information, and guidance on your journey to medical school and beyond at mededmedia.com.